The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you and he will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. All right. Well, grace and peace, Bethany Lutheran Church, from God our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today is Pentecost. I apologize if you didn't get the memo about wearing red, or if you are like my family of redheads and you don't own a lot of red. On this day, we remember the Holy Spirit coming down on the followers of Jesus in the form of fire. And He gives them the gift of being able to speak in different languages so that everybody, all the people who are in the square, can hear the Gospel in their own language. They can hear the good news. So this is a day where we celebrate the divided body of Christ from every nation being brought together as one family for the very first time. We heard from Paul's letter to the church in Rome that the job of the Spirit is, is to connect us as one family. He says all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God because we have all received a spirit of adoption, he says. And that's Paul's way of saying that in our baptisms, we are all welcomed into the family of God. And what a big and sometimes strange and wacky family it is. So take a second. I want you to kind of look around you. Look to your left. Look at the people on your right. Odds are one of those people is a little weird. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Of course, I'm joking. Of course, both of them are probably weird. <laughs> no, but God's family is big and it's full of all kinds of people from every race and nationality. We speak hundreds of different languages. We are Americans and Russians, Brazilians and Canadians, Chinese and Australians. Even Swedes and Norwegians are allowed at this table. We all come together to worship at the same table before God. And the beautiful thing about being a part of a family like this is that, you know, in the world, you may not always feel like you fit in. But in God's family, you always belong. And with a family this big, you know that even when you aren't perfect, even when you mess up a little bit, you will always be loved. So let me tell you what I mean. Some of you might, might not believe this, uh, but I was actually kind of dorky as a kid <laughs> growing up. Don't look so shocked, everyone. Actually, the confirmation students know. Uh, but, and to add to that, I, you know, I grew up in Utah, and you know, Utah is its own special kind of place for a lot of reasons I don't even want to get into. But let's just say that in a lot of ways, I, didn't feel, I never felt like I really fit in there. And so when the day came that I graduated from high school, I wasn't really interested in having a grad party, mostly because I thought it was going to be kind of small and one of those small, awkward parties where you're forcing small talk. 
But I'll tell you what, my parents, being the wonderful people that they are, insisted. And so they threw a grad party for myself and my twin brother, Neil. And when the day came, I was shocked because the doorbell, it just kept ringing. And people kept coming and the house was full. You know, I had some friends, I, did, I had some friends show up and some family came from out of state. But what really surprised me that day was how many people from church came. Now, for a kid who never quite felt like he fit in, what I learned that day was that I had always had a place where I belonged. It was my church family. And I never realized or fully appreciated it until that day, but all along the way, I had people who had cared for me and had been praying for me and supporting me. Well, the same thing is true for our 8th grade students today. You know, they're getting confirmed, and whether or not they feel like they fit in with the world in their schools or in their communities, this is a place where you belong. This is a place where you will be welcomed and celebrated as a part of God's family. And in God's family, we know that we won't always be perfect, but we will always be loved. So each year I do entrance interviews with our soon-to-be-confirmed students, and pretty much every year I find myself giving the exact same speech to them. So they've already heard this. Here's what I tell them. When you were baptized, I say there were a lot of promises that were made to you. Your parents and your godparents and your church, we all made promises to be there for you and to support you, and not just in your faith, but in your whole life. I told you from birth to death and everything in between. And that's why you've been coming to confirmation. And that's why Bethany is here. That's why I do what I do and why Pastor Kathy does what she does. And all the people who work at this church and volunteer at this church, that is why we do what we do. But, I tell them, the most important promise that was made to you that day was a promise from God. Because when you were baptized, God promised that from that day forward, you would forever be a part of God's family. And that's a promise that can never ever be taken away from you or wrestled away from you. It belongs to you forever. Now that's a hard thing to wrap your mind around. What does it mean to be a son or a daughter of God? And to explain that, I, I tell the story of the prodigal son in these interviews now, of course, it's a famous parable that Jesus told about a rich man who had two sons. And one of the sons came to him and asked for his half of the inheritance early. And the father gives it to him. And so the son takes his share of the money. It's a vast fortune. And he blows it all on living the high life. And finally, his money runs out and he's starving. And to get by, just to get by, he has to get a job feeding pigs. This is rock bottom. And so the son says to himself, well, at least my father's servants, they have enough to eat. And so he makes a plan to head back home and beg his father for a job as a servant in his household. Now at this point, I usually stop and I ask the confirmation kids what they think the father will do. And my favorite answers are usually from the ones who maybe aren't as familiar with the story or don't remember the story, because usually they say, well, father should kick him out. <laughs> the father was probably really mad, they say. And I love that answer because that is honest and it's true to what we might expect. And when I get that answer, I love telling them the real ending of the story. Because the story goes that when the son was still a long ways off, before the son even said a word, before he got to apologize or explain things to his dad, his father saw him and he ran to him and he gave him a big hug, welcomed him back into the family and threw a big party for him. That's what the father does. The father does that because... It was his son. It was his son, and so it didn't matter what he had done. It didn't matter how badly he had screwed up. 
It didn't matter because the Father says he was dead and has now come back to life. He was lost and now is found. So when you were baptized, I tell the eighth graders, you became a daughter or a son of God. And so from that day forward, it didn't matter what you had done. It didn't matter because from that day forward, you belonged as a member of God's family. For me, that is what affirmation of baptism is all about. That is what Pentecost is all about. It's about this big, diverse, wacky family of God. And it's about how we all came together to be a part of this imperfect but beautiful and loved family. And so to our 8th graders who are getting confirmed, and to all who are gathered here today, know this. In the world, you will not always fit in, but in God's family, you will always belong. And in life, you will not always be perfect, but in God's family, you will always be loved. Thanks be to God. Amen.